Hi folks, I hope you're doing well today. It's 10.30 p.m. on the 8th of June 2020. I did a video the other day you know, saying it's, I feel sorry for the protesters because it's a difficult situation for them. Because changing things is going to be really difficult to say the least. Well, that's just flipping obvious. Yeah, that was an obvious thing to say, really. Um, I just watched the program that I watched a few times before. What well, I used to watch all the time. Last week, tonight, we John Oliver. And his latest episode is certainly worth a watch. If you want to understand the issue um, with the police in America, oof, uh, it's a massive issue. That's a certainty, it's a massive issue. Um, can't quite say what you should think of it because it is a huge place. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, part of the problem is you've got unions, you've got protection for the police, where they've got um, some sort of job immunity, and very, very clever lawyer system that uh, if you try and sue the police, if you cite the wrong word in your um, case against them, there you go, dismissed, straight away. <laughs> Ridiculous. The police are protected so much, it is absolutely insane. Yeah, the police union, I mean, what on earth the police have a union for, I don't bloody well know. It's, it's absolutely insane. Why the police you need the union, again, why do they need a blinking union? In case they're badly treated, by whom? Generally speaking, politicians know that they need police, right? Any police officer who is sacked for a wrongful reason, there are many avenues nowadays to use to challenge a wrongful sacking, a wrongful dismissal. There are many avenues because even a citizen has avenues that they can use against a wrongful dismissal. So therefore, everybody has that, including the police. They don't need the unions for that. So, what's the point of the unions? But they had something the other day, where even on this um, John Oliver thing, they mention it again, where the police chief and the mayor in Wisconsin, where poor George was killed, tried to bring some reforms to the police in the area and the police union blocked them the whole way did not allow them to bring out any reforms at all and these people in charge of the unions look like mafia men they really do you know what's the episode of john oliver download it watch it on youtube Whatever you have to do to watch it, watch it. Brilliant. It's a good episode. And, and usually with this episode, John Oliver is not trying to make jokes where it's really inappropriate. In a few places he does, yeah. But um, it's supposed to be a comedy show. But this one is a bit more serious for good reason. So yeah, it's, it's one of those situations that is really difficult. Because, yes, there are many examples where mayors and police chiefs have tried to bring reforms, but the unions have blocked them. Now, there was one police force that did a clever thing. It actually dissolved its whole police force, the whole lot, and made every police officer who wanted to be a police officer to reapply. And they didn't employ the ones that were the bad ones. They did not re-employ them. And that way they got rid of a lot of the bad officers in one go. Really easy, really quickly. Although obviously not easy, not quick, because when you do that, when you dissolve your police force, you don't know that anyone's going to reapply. It's risky. 
absolutely it's risky yep but it is what it is you know doing all of that is not easy at all um So, yeah, these people are wanting change. And rightly so, because I mentioned the lady who got killed in her own home, then there was George Floyd. There was another man who was suffocated to death because he was put in a chokehold. And again, he was telling the officer he couldn't breathe, and the officer killed him, choked him to death. And the officer was not charged with killing that man. Again, the question is, how on earth not? How are you not charged with at least manslaughter after doing that? It is insane. Absolutely insane. Mad. Um, well, I think the lad who was, who was choked to death... He was choked to death because he was selling cigarettes without taxing, without paying the right tax. So knock off cigarettes, he was selling them, and because he wasn't actually paying tax for them, he was arrested, and they put him in his choke hole and killed him. It's insane. Many people would rightly say, oh, but you don't live in America, so what does it concern you? And they're right, it doesn't really, it doesn't really impact my life. Because I'm not going to go to America. I have no interest in going there. Been there before. I went to New York for a while, North Carolina, into New York, and it was okay. It was okay, I mean, you yeah. know. People are people, all over. They're just people. Slightly different accent, but that really is about it. Um, many of them liked my accent because obviously it's English compared to their English. But apart from that, it was people, really. You know, big roads, big vehicles, big buildings. Yep, okay. Yeah, not impressive. None of it impressed me particularly. So... Yeah, I have no interest in going there, so it's not really going to impact me. But these are human beings that this is happening to. And it's a police force. And because it's a police force, you know, on the um, last week tonight, John Oliver points at a comment that was made shortly after slavery about that they must use the police force to make laws against the Negro. And he says that really the police force was set up for that purpose. And it's still doing that. And it's like, well, yeah, I don't know. Let's say, I mean, I, I'm i not convinced that the police are just racist. I don't think racist is really the issue. And I don't think that really, if you really look into it, that you'll see that as a whole in America, that so-called black people are harassed that much more than white people in the whole of America. Let's say there are places in America where there's many pinky-skinned people rather than brown, and they would get harassed because the police just harass people. That's in their nature. And they will harass the easy targets. They always will. And part of the problem for the African, for the Afro-Americans, the brown people, is that the Republican Party, for a certainty, is trying its absolute best to stop them from voting because they know that they're going to vote Democrat. Pretty much, they know that they're pretty much a certainty as a Democrat voter because they pretty much have always voted Democrat. Um, 
so they try and stop them voting. Now, you can understand that from a Republican point of view. They're trying to really stop their opponent's biggest voters from voting. So are they trying to stop them because of the colour of their skin or because they are their opponent's best chance of getting in? Is that why they're doing it? The problem is, is it, it we've seen that it's a racial thing, which it probably isn't. Although, yeah, some Republicans are going to be racist. Some Democrats are going to be racist. Yeah, so oh, it's a tricky situation. It really is. But one thing is a certainty: the police need to be, you know, reformed. There's a need for that. But John Stewart showed John Stewart. Um, <laughs> he was the bloke who used to be in charge of the Daily Daily Show. Fantastic man, great man, John Stewart. Got a lot of respect for him. John Oliver showed that I think it was about six years ago he did an episode then where he was talking about the police being militarized where they were having military training and having a lot of military vehicles and military weapons and he said then that it was going way over the top for the police and yet here we are six years later where that hasn't been dealt with And so, obviously, there was need for reform a long time ago, and yet things have been allowed to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So, clearly, there's need for reform, but if you've got the unions getting in the way, if you've got a president at the moment who he did a speech in front of the police, basically, where he was saying, trying to make a joke. <laughs> What a comedian this man is. Trying to make a joke in front of all the police saying, yeah, I'd rather you weren't so kind and so nice to people. That if you're dealing with someone who's killed someone, instead of actually using your hand to lower their head so they don't hit their head against the, the roof of the car as they get into the car, move your hand away. And of course, all the police were clapping. <laughs> so great. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes. We'd like to be able to do that, wouldn't we? And of course, you've got a president, therefore, you know, head of all of that, who's saying to the police, be more violent. Yeah, great idea. Let's see how that one works, actually. And as John Oliver was saying, if they pass certain things to get reforms through, which they could do. The president's not going to sign it. He has no interest in doing it. But recent presidents have... One second. Chewy, shut up, Granin. You know, next to Lucy and Riley, they're not even moving, so shush. He gets quite growly. Pack it up, you nutter. Get bishy boshy, you carry him. I'll pack it up. I've got a ton of it, though. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. They were saying that um, this immunity thing that the police have, the um, what's it called? Supreme Court, the Supreme Court people, where you've got the nine judges, seven judges, could actually abolish that. But for that to be continued through, because I think the Congress have put a bill forward for that to happen, the president would have to sign it. And he was saying, that's not going to happen. Unless we get a new president come November, we could wait four years or you know forever for that to be signed. And this is the thing about these unfortunate protesters are protesting protesting and protesting trying to do peaceful protests and the problem is what do they want and how are they going to get it because you can say well, if they just voted okay as already mentioned the republicans are trying to stop them from voting 
big time. Like recently, you had that situation with Trump where he was talking about postal voters and how he wanted to stop all postal voting because that's where a lot of corruption is going to come in. Even though Republicans have used post, postal voting more than Democrats. He didn't say it when, they, when his side wanted to use them. But he realised that it could be a way that Afro-Caribbean voters could vote. He doesn't want that. So he's trying to put a stop to it. I mean, they were talking about that the other day on the Bill Mayer programme about Trump. And if Trump loses the election, what's he going to do? Where Trump said at a speech that he has the army, he has the police, and he has the bikers. All the tough guys who would come out for him when needed. And then if he loses the election. He wants to use the army and the police and the the bikers or you know, the right wing nutters with guns to stop himself from being removed from the office. I mean, that is, again, just insane. It's an insane situation, one that should never be allowed to happen. But chances are it's going to happen. We've known that for a number of years now, that this man, he is not likely to accept defeat. Not likely to accept defeat in any way, shape or form. With his attitude, he will most likely say it's rigged. And with that being the case, you know, he's going to say he's not going to go. And that's going to get very interesting, to say the least. It'll be the first time it's happened, and, you know, he had best hope that before that happens, within weeks but before that happens, that the police don't kill another brown skinned person. Because at the end of the episode of this latest John Oliver, tonight with John, with, what's it called? I did say earlier, it's uh, last week tonight with John Oliver. At the end of that, there's a lady speaking, and the lady says, you should be thankful. We want equality, not revenge. It's in the brown people. If it keeps on happening, there's a chance revenge could be on the cards. And the last thing Trump wants is for the brown community to be up in arms at a time when he's just been voted out of the office. And he wants to stay. Bet your bottom dollar. They could soon arm themselves to the teeth. Take on his people. Get into the Oval Office. And drag him out. Bet your bottom dollar they would. They'd want to. I think they would try to. Abuse enough of them. And yeah. That is quite likely to be the case. So, yeah, reform is needed, but, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think so in any way, shape or form. I think for that to happen, there are far too many variables, you know, union, um, the police themselves. Can easily sum it up. I mean, you've got to have the mayor interested, you've got the police chief interested, Got to have the union going to be okay with it. Um, even the first two, the mayor and the police chief, you know, most mayors and police chiefs aren't interested in reforming at all. The ones that are, you might have a mayor that's interested, but not a police chief, or vice versa. And then when you have got the two, you've got to get the unions interested. And as far as I know, there is no unions at all who are interested in major reforms. 
They just are not interested in major reforms at all. Apparently, the government can request reforms take place in police areas. But again, that's government, so that'll be down to the president area. And this one is certainly not going to do that. But as I say, you've got that episode, watch it. I can't give it justice at all. Um, John Oliver has a team of people doing tons of research. And yeah, they've done a good job. So watch that. Give it a watch if you can. It's worth a watch. If you can find it on YouTube or um, there are various sites where you might be able to download it. I think it's HMO is their parent company. I'm not sure. One of those American comedy channels. So there you go. Unfortunately, that's not good news. That, that isn't looking bright. I'll be, as I said the other day, I'd be very, very surprised if enough reform happens to make a difference. Same as the issue with gun violence, where you have mass shootings. Yeah, there have been enough mass shootings, and yet there's been no reform. There's no reform on gun law or anything like that. Because there's enough resistance for that. The resistance for it is stronger, more determined, and better funded. And that's the thing. Resistance to police changing, being reformed, is very strong, very large, and incredibly well funded. You can hear that tapping, it's just me tapping on the chair. I'm emphasizing a point. <laughs> I'm sorry that the situation is what it is. It's, uh, as I say, it, I feel sorry for the protesters, and that's the main reason why. And you know, pretty much, there's going to be more of those things happening. Because there is. Because there absolutely is. There's going to be a lot more of that happening. Because if there's no real desire for reform, then there will be no reform. If there's no reform, it means things will just carry on as they have been. Nothing's going to really change. Things will change for a little while. They will. In most areas, things will change for a little while. But as I said, one of the most shocking things about what happened with that George Floyd incident was that the police knew they were being filmed and they didn't care. It didn't change the way they behaved in any way, shape or form. That's one of the biggest concerns about it. If they didn't care, they weren't expecting to face any charges from that at all. Even if he died, which he ended up, did die, they weren't expecting any repercussions from that at all. Even while it's been recorded. They knew that recording could be used as evidence against them and they didn't care. You look at the photographs of the officers with their orange jumpsuits on. Prison wear. The officer who killed George Floyd looked shocked. He looked shocked. Because he's now been prosecuted. He's been charged with a crime. They never expected that, folks. Because they've been protected. Completely. And that is not a good situation. They were showing also in that program. The reason why it's, it'd be worth watching that John Oliver program is because of the fact they mentioned something else where there was a, a man who's supposedly a designer of something called Kill Orangey. And he's basically telling police that, you know, in order to catch a killer, they've got a beer killer. 
and they need to be prepared to shoot somebody to save other people, etc., etc., etc. If they're not prepared to do that, they should be in another job. Basically, what he's telling the police is that they're killers, and everyone out there is bait. Not bait, what's, what, what was the thing? Um, what's the word? He used the word anyway, as in um, the opposite of a killer. The victims, potential victims. Yeah. That's what I said. The police see you all as guilty. They just don't know what you're guilty of yet. But they assume you're all guilty. And that's because of the fact, the way they've been trained. And even that bloke who was teaching that, that stuff that was vile. One of the heads of police union was saying... Because a police chief and the mayor banned that sort of stuff, said police can't go to it. This chap said that he makes sure that officers can go to it on their own time. And even if that's illegal, he knows that he won't be charged or he'll get off of it if he is. And so that's the mentality of what you have to deal with. So the first thing you've got to do is deal with the police unions. You've got to get them sorted out. You get them right, guarantee you, you get the police right. But you've got to get the police unions right before you can do anything. Same as gun issues, you've got to get the gun lobbies sorted out first. If you can deal with the gun lobbies and get with them, then you can, you can reform the gun laws quite easy. Quite easy. It wouldn't be difficult to do at all. But you're going to get rid of your biggest resistance to change. All the while you've got that massive resistance to change, so there would be no change because they won't allow there to be. It's as simple as that. So protesters, you can protest until you know, your feet are worn away. And you've been worn away to the knee. You won't get any change. Unless you can deal with the blockage. Deal with those who block change. Then you might get some change. Again, I apologise for the nasalness of my voice. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, I've had pretty much no nasal airway since being born. Um, it was due to being born premature. My nose hadn't actually developed properly. So, not enough I can do about it. I've had two operations to try and fix it. They've just made it worse. So, I do apologise. Maybe at some point I can get some um, software to change the effect of my voice. To get rid of the nasally tone. But right now, I don't have the money to be able to do that, so... Well, I'm not making money from videos, and I'm probably never going to. So, unless I make money some other way, I'm not really going to be spending tons of money on uh, video production. So, unfortunately, it is what it is. You take care. God bless, and I will speak to you soon. And, yeah, if you can find ways to change things, go for it. Take care. Bye-bye.